Summary of Unlimited Power, The New Science of Personal Achievement, written by Tony Robbins. Introduction. Imagine being asked to walk on fire. Would you take that step? At Tony Robbins' renowned Mind Revolution Seminar, participants engage in the extraordinary act of firewalking, a symbolic journey from fear to empowerment. In this four-day event, Robbins imparts invaluable lessons on overcoming fears, taking decisive action, and embracing the belief that nothing is insurmountable. The firewalk becomes a metaphor for conquering challenges, illustrating that fear is but a construct of the mind. Tony Robbins, once a disheartened and unproductive individual, washing dishes in a bathtub, transformed his life in just three years. From loneliness, excess weight, and a lack of purpose, Robbins emerged as a vibrant, successful figure. A best-selling author and influential motivational speaker, he has touched the lives of politicians, business executives, athletes, and individuals grappling with various fears and disabilities. By the age of 25, Robbins had achieved fame, success, and wealth. Despite being a high school graduate, he forged a fulfilling career inspiring people and found love in his personal life. In this book, Robbins shares the principles that propelled his journey and the transformative lessons he imparts in his seminars. It serves as a guide to unlocking the boundless potential within you. The message is clear. There are no limits to what you can achieve as the wellspring of unlimited power resides within you. This revised version aims to maintain the energy and excitement while refining the flow and clarity of certain sentences. Feel free to adjust as needed to align with your personal style and the overall tone you wish to convey. The Commodity of Kings Tony Robbins observed many successful people. He found out that they have a consistent pattern to success. Tony called it the ultimate success formula. It consists of four steps. The first step is to set your target. It is to know what you really want to achieve. The second step is to take action. It is to move towards the goal. Sometimes the actions you take are wrong. They lead you away from success and not towards it. That's why you need step three. It is to assess your actions and get feedback. After that is step four. That is changing your behavior. It is to change your actions until you achieved your target or desired results. Take the story of Steven Spielberg. At age 36, he already became the best director of all time. He created four out of the ten best blockbuster films in history. Some of the top-grossing films he made are E.T., Jurassic Park, Indiana Jones, and Schindler's List. How did Spielberg start his amazing career? Was he a gifted director from the start? Did he have special advantages? You will find that Spielberg followed the ultimate success formula, I want to be a film director. That is the thought that filled Spielberg's mind as a teenager. When he was 17 years old, he went to a tour in the Universal Studios. His group didn't make it to the sound stages where a film was actually being shot. So Spielberg took action. He sneaked in to the shooting. Spielberg stayed and observed until he met one of the film editors. They talked for an hour. Spielberg told the editor about the films he wants to make. The story would have ended there for other people, but not for Spielberg. He has the power to bring his thoughts into action. He devised a plan. He went back to the studio the very next day. Spielberg arrived wearing a suit. He was even carrying his dad's briefcase. Spielberg passed the security guard as if he really works for Universal Studios. He walked with purpose and confidence. Little did the guard know that all that Spielberg's briefcase contains was two candy bars and a sandwich.
Inside the studio, Spielberg found an empty trailer. He settled himself in there and put a signage on the door. He posted, Steven Spielberg, director, Spielberg spent the summer like this. He talked with writers, editors, and directors. He listened to their conversations and observed what they do. Spielberg learned a lot from the people around him. After three years of being a regular in the studio, he received his first contract. Spielberg created a simple film, which he presented to the Universal Studio staff. They saw his potential, and he was given a seven-year contract. At 20 years old, Spielberg became the director of his first TV show. You can see how Spielberg had the ultimate success formula. He had the goal, and he decided to take action. He stuck around the studio and learned from the staff. Spielberg adapted himself until he is fit to become a director. You can follow the ultimate success formula, too. It doesn't matter who you are and what you have. What matters is you take the steps. The difference that makes the difference. Why is it that they are people who have everything in the world, yet they are not happy? There are those who have fame and money, who have plenty of friends and possessions, who have successful career and a perfect partner, yet they end up in despair and anger. On the other hand, there are people who have physical disabilities, who suffer from poverty and who are looked down upon by society, yet they have overcome challenges and lived a joyful life. What makes the difference? Who would you rather be? The difference lies not on the things that happened to us, but what we make of the things that happened to us. It's not about the circumstances, but how we perceive them. If an unfortunate event happened to you, what do you tell yourself? Do you think about negative thoughts and choose to do negative actions? Or do you look at the brighter side and do what will make the situation better? Let's study the stories of these two men. The first one is John Belushi. He is a famous comedian in the 1970s. He had many great shows and performances. He is one of the best entertainers in his time. At 22 years old, Belushi became the youngest member of Second City, which is a highly acclaimed comedy troupe in Chicago. Belushi eventually became the star of the show. From the theaters, he also made it to television and movies. He became even more popular. People were in awe of his amazing talent. Belushi gained so many friends. He bought some nice properties in New York and married a beautiful woman. Belushi is living the dream. However, amidst all that, amidst all the praises that he gets around him, Belushi is actually suffering inside. He became a drug addict. He became dependent on heroin and cocaine. Outside, Belushi seems that he's got everything. But inside, he feels absolutely nothing. All that Belushi had is emptiness that he tried to fill with drugs. He died at 33 years old. The cause of John Belushi's death was drug overdose. Now, let's take a look at the story of W. Mitchell. One night, Mitchell was riding his motorcycle along the highway at 65 miles per hour. It was very dark. Something distracted him which made Mitchell look on his side. When he looked back at the road again, he barely had the chance to react. A huge truck in front of him suddenly went to a halt. Mitchell was still running at 65 miles per hour. He stepped on the brakes and turned his motorcycle into a skid. Everything seemed to be in slow motion. Mitchell desperately wanted to stop. But then, when he finally did, he was beneath the truck. The gas cap of his motorcycle popped out. The fuel spilled and burst into flames. Mitchell lost consciousness. He woke up lying on a hospital bed. He felt pain all over his body. He cannot move. Mitchell's body suffered third-degree burns. Even his face was terribly disfigured. Mitchell didn't give up, though. 
he recovered and went back to his business career. Another accident happened, though. One day, the airplane he was riding crashed. This time, Mitchell was paralyzed from waist down. He had to be in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Mitchell could have ended up like Belushi. He could have spent his days sitting on his wheelchair while watching TV and drinking beer. He could have shut himself from the world, but he didn't. Instead of being miserable, W. Mitchell picked himself up. He continued on his business and became a millionaire. He met many influential people. Mitchell even ran for Congress. He had a happy marriage and a fulfilling life in Colorado. Tony Robbins teaches about neuro-linguistic programming. Simply put, it means to program your mind to have right thoughts so that you can do right actions. It's about communicating with yourself to have positive behavior. The Power of State There are days when you wake up feeling grumpy, when you feel like everything is going wrong. You just Resign, saying to yourself that it's your unlucky day. There are also days when you feel so positive. Things with work, your family, and your finances are going well. You even do something heroic or achieve something great, like finishing a project or winning a game. You are the same person. Yet, why are there days when you mostly fail and days when you mostly win? There are days when you feel like you're in control and days when you feel like life just passes you by. The difference lies in the state you're in. There are enabling states. These are when your mind is filled with joy, love, confidence, strength, and faith. There are also paralyzing states. These are when you feel fear, sadness, confusion, anxiety, and frustration. You have the power to snap out of paralyzing states and remain in enabling states. You have the power to run your brain. You can create your enabling state at will. It can be as quick as snapping your fingers. Learn from the story of Carl Wallenda. He is an expert acrobat. For years, Carl performed amazing stunts in the air. He wowed many audiences by doing dangerous tricks. He never even once thought about falling. Carl is full of confidence and grace. But then, one day, something happened. He saw himself falling. Carl couldn't get it out of his mind. He saw himself swinging hard and falling fast to the ground. The image haunts him, especially when he's up in the air. Months passed by. Carl actually did fall. It was the first and the last time he did. A single thought sent a signal to his brain. It altered his state and altered his behavior. Carl gave his brain a new direction. That is to go straight down to his death. Let's look at another situation. Dick Tomey is a college football coach in Hawaii. He knows how to communicate and bring the best out of his team. They had a championship game in Wyoming. It was a hard fight for Tomei's team. They were trampled in the field. It was already half time, but the score is 22-0 in favor of the opponent. It seemed to be an unlucky day for Tomei and his team. The players felt down and frustrated. In the locker room, they all bowed their heads and felt hopeless. There's no way that they can beat the other team with the remaining time. Everyone thought that they're going to lose except for Coach Tomey. He collected inspiring articles over the years. They are stories of teams like theirs who had been behind on a large score. They are about teams who turned the game around and won despite the odds. Tomey brought out his collection and posted them in front of his players. He let them absorb the victory pictures and cheerful headlines. Tomey told the players that if these teams did it, so can they. It isn't impossible for them to win. There's still time, and anything can happen. The players went back to the field with a whole new energy. They played like it's the last game of their lives, and it paid off. 
from zero in the first half, the players garnered 27 in the second half. Coach Tomey's team won with score of 27-22. Just like that, you can turn the situation around. Don't allow yourself to be in a paralyzing state. You can focus your thoughts. You can bring yourself into an enabling state at all times. The birth of excellence, belief. When we hear the word belief, we often relate it to religion. But belief is not just about higher beings and sacred texts. Belief can refer to any principle which gives you direction and guidance in life. It is the way in which you see the world. Your beliefs command your nervous system. When you believe in something, it becomes the reality for you. It gives you power to take action. Pablo Casals is a great musician. He is proficient in playing several instruments, including the piano. At 90 years old, though, he suffered from arthritis and emphysema. Pablo's hands were swollen and his fingers were twisted. He struggled to breathe. Getting up in the morning is such a chore for the old man. It takes him time to carry his frail body. He walked slowly. His back is stooped over. He needed help in simple tasks like changing clothes. Before breakfast, Pablo always makes his way to the piano. He walks his slow walk with his stooped back and knobby knees. Even sitting on the piano chair gives him a difficulty. But when he finally settles his fingers on the keys, Pablo Casals transforms. He's not a sick old man anymore, but a highly capable pianist. He plays like a strong, healthy young man. His twisted fingers perform the melodies of Bach and Brahms. His hands were attracted to the keys in the same way that a plant is attracted to the sunlight. Pablo's back was less stooped his breathing less labored. His strong belief in music made him overcome his sickness. He wanted to play so much that he was able to control his stiff fingers. When Pablo stood up from the piano, he was different. He stood a little taller and straighter. He walked toward the dining table and ate happily. Pablo even went outside to get some fresh air. Do you know about placebo effect? It is a concept in medicine wherein patients are given a pill with no healing properties. In one research on placebo, a group of ulcer patients are divided into two. The first group was given a drug which they were told would give them instant relief. The second was given a drug which is still being developed. Seventy percent of the ulcer patients in the first group said that the drug worked. They experienced immediate relief and they quickly felt better. Only 20% of the second group felt the same way. Both groups were actually given the same drug. It doesn't have any medicinal properties. It is simply an empty pill. But the researchers made the patients believe that one is highly effective and the other is still being tested. The results are striking. Many doctors have proven that it's not always about the drugs. If a patient truly believes that they can recover, they can will their body to do so. Have you been in this particular situation? Your mother asks your help to get the salt. You enter the kitchen and look around. After a couple of minutes, you give up and say you cannot find it. Your mother then comes from behind you and gets the salt right there. It's actually on the shelf in front of you. She would say that if it was a snake, you could have been bitten. The reason why you did not find the salt is because of your belief. The moment you said, I can't, you sent a command to your brain not to see what you're looking for. The Seven Lies of Success the lies that Tony Robbins are referring here is not about cheating and dishonesty. Here's how he explains it. As a person, you don't really know if what you believe in is true or false. Even scientists or geniuses can never know for sure. But the thing is, it doesn't matter. What matters most is that your beliefs work for you. Do your beliefs uplift you? 
Do they support you from day to day and make you become a better person? Do they enrich your life and help you enrich the lives of others? If they do, then those beliefs are your lies of success. You don't know 100% if they're true, but they get you to somewhere you want to be. Tony Robbins listed seven beliefs. Here are some of them. The first belief is everything happens for a reason. This is what separates successful people from ordinary persons. Successful people always see the positive in any situation. Even if others see that there's no way out, successful people focus on the possibilities. They take failures as a lesson and an opportunity to succeed. Take the story of Marilyn Hamilton. She owns a successful business in California. When she was younger, Marilyn practiced teaching and even became a beauty queen. That is, until the day that she had a terrible accident. Marilyn fell off a cliff in one of her mountain trips. From that day on, she became paralyzed from waist down. Marilyn could have wallowed in the things that she could no longer do, but instead, she focused on the opportunities that are open for her. Marilyn got frustrated of the wheelchair she's using. She thought, why not create a better wheelchair? There may be others, like her, who wanted wheelchairs which could help them move around and do more. And so, Marilyn got in touch with her mountain climbing friends and they designed a new wheelchair together. They founded Motion Designs. In a few years, their small business grew to be a multi-million company. Remember that limited beliefs make limited people. If all you see are hindrances, then maybe it's time to make a change. Try a new perspective. Stop seeing the desert and start seeing the garden. You will be surprised at how much difference it will make to your life. The second belief is there is no such thing as failure. There are only results. Successful people do not see failure. If something goes wrong, they simply take it as the result of their action. Therefore, they try a different approach and see if they will arrive with something else. Successful people just keep on trying until they finally have what they wanted. There was once a young man who lost a business at age 21. He ran for a legislative position and lost at age 22. He tried at business again, but lost again at age 24. The young man lost his sweetheart when he was 26. At age 27, he suffered a nervous breakdown. The man ran for Congress. He lost at age 34. He ran as senator at age 45 and as vice president at age 47. Still, he wasn't elected. It was only at the age of 52 when he finally made it. The man was elected president of the United States. The guy we're talking about is none under than Abraham Lincoln. He lost many times, but he didn't give up. He chose not to dwell in negative emotions. Lincoln rose above it all and became one of the best presidents that America has ever had. The third belief is there is no long-term success without long-term commitment. If you study successful people, whether in business, sports, or politics, you will come to notice that they're not really the smartest, the strongest, or the fastest in their field. But for sure, they are the ones who have the most commitment. Larry Bird is a professional basketball player. He is one of the best in the history of NBA. Larry moves slow. He cannot jump high enough. But still, he became the most valuable player. The reason is that Larry has a high sense of commitment. He practices more than anyone else. He has more determination and he has more drive. Because of that, Larry was able to improve his skill significantly. There are taller and more agile players, but they can't beat the high performance of Larry. Conclusion You learned about Tony Robbins. You learned about the ultimate success formula and neuro-linguistic programming. You learned about paralyzing and enabling states. 
you learned about the power of belief and the seven lies of success. There is untapped potential within you. The lessons you learned from this book will help you discover your unlimited power. Tony Robbins and his many followers have done it. Start seeing a world full of possibilities today.